So Thomas Cuckbush was born in 1866 and he died in 1903. Um, he was a contemporary suspect for the identity of the serial killer known as Jack the Ripper. He was accused by the British press shortly after the 1888 murders. He spent the rest of his days in detention in Broadmoor Hospital for inferring knife attacks against women. Thomas Cutbush was born in Kensington, a district about three miles from Whitechapel, and was 22 when the murders in East London occurred. He came from a respectable middle-class family, but his childhood was conflicted. Since his father left Thomas's mother, Kate, and young Thomas when he was only two, and he went to New Zealand where he married again. He was an only child. His mother, Kate, never married again. Kate and her unmarried sister, Clara, brought Thomas up. It has been suggested they were incredibly religious, who, who suffered from neurological distor disorders, but Kate doted on her only son. The young man showed serious behavioral problems in his initial job, from which he was almost immediately fired. In his second job, he was even worse. But infuriated, he pushed his old employer down the stairs. Once he lost that job, Cutbush began showing extremely idle and extravagant behavior. During the day, he isolated himself in order to read medical books. And during the night, he wandered around Whitechapel jumping over the walls of houses in the neighborhood with astonishing speed and agility. He was obsessed with the idea that someone was slowly poisoning him. It was, it is, it's presumed that Thomas contracted syphilis because of his activities with prostitutes in 1888. And from there, his beha behavior became even more eccentric and aggressive. Before being arrested for committing serious crimes, he had already been detained due to improper and violent acts. He was locked up in the asylum in Lambeth, but that lasted only four days because Cutbush managed to escape by jumping the walls of the medical institution, once again displaying his dexterity. In 1891, he was convicted of stabbing two women in the buttocks on two different occasions in the middle of public roads. The victims were Florence Grace Johnson and Isabel Fraser Anderson, both from Kensington. Two years earlier, another man named Collicott perpetrated similar aggressions in the same area, and the police assumed that those attacks inspired Cutbush, who acted in a similar way. Found responsible for these crimes by a medical board, and the doctors diagnosed him as psychotic and dangerous. After that, the British justice sentenced him to confinement and medical treatment for an indefinite period until the patient showed signs of recovery, which he never did. His confinement was arranged for an indefinite, indefinite period of time, being placed at the order of Her Majesty. According to an expression that was used at the time to describe these cases, the, hospi the hospitalization was carried out in the Broadmoor Hospital. As of February 1894, the influential and sensational English newspaper, The Sun, accused through a series of articles Thomas Cutbush of being responsible for the murders committed in London's East End. The public accusations did not give rise to the prosecution of criminal charges against the defendant, and police hierarchies even defended him, dismissing Cutbush, nothing more than able to commit a single type of crime, not murder. The inmate's most noted defender was Sir Melville McNaughton, Chief Inspector of Scotland Yard. In a famous police memorandum, he emphatically rejected Cutbush's alleged guilt and, instead, related the names of three others, outlining the reasons that led him to believe that those individuals were more plausible suspects to occupy the anonymous figure of Jack the Ripper. Sir Melville also suggested that Thomas was closely related to Superintendent Charles Cutbush, who committed suicide in 1896, a few years after retiring from the Metropolitan Police. But in fact, they were not related at all. In more recent times, the name of Thomas Cutbush returned as a possible suspect of being the infamous killer. In 1993, author A.P. Wolfe made the initial publication with the essay, Jack 
the myth, a new look at the Ripper. There, the theory was offered that the police covered up the criminal's identity. The candidate proposed by the author precisely became this individual. It is argued that his anonymity as a murderer was achieved thanks to the police conspiracy. Interested in not disclosing that the Ripper was a rel relative of a Scotland Yard chief, this hypothesis had followers who later gave their support in later works. However, given that there was no familial relationship between Thomas Hayes and Charles Cutbush, these works have led people away from any truth. So, this was a fun one, guys. Um, I have one more question, though. And I was talking to my husband about this last night. And I asked him, do you really want to know who Jack the Ripper was? And of course he said, yes, he does want to know. But does he really? Because once we solve this mystery, it will no longer be a mystery. So, yes, for the victim's families, of course, of course, we want to know who, who Jack the Ripper was. But I think... A lot of times when we're we're going into cases like Jack the Ripper with so many conspiracy theories we forget about the true victims and what those victims went through is just awful but for the conspiracy theorists and the conspiracy theorist and all of us do we really want to answer the mystery and will this mystery even, can it ever be solved? Even with the DNA proof, we still can't agree that the DNA is factual. So maybe we someday we can do a part two of, of more Jack the Ripper suspects because this was, this was interesting. And I will see you all again soon.